Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the last two weeks. It's an exciting time because all of the evidence now culminates in the opportunity for us to decide together on how we're going to conclude the case. In my opening statement, I said to you that this is a case of broken promises. This is a case where an employer says to his employee that I will protect you and I will take care of you if you have a disability at work. But remember, the, the employees have also made promises to the employer as well, and that is to come to work every single day and to work hard. It's a mutual promise that occurs. But the question that I have is this. If the employer has made a promise to the employee that if there is a disability, he or she or it will be there for her, has that occurred in this case? We say that it is not. In the opening statement, I said to you that the opening statement is a promise, and that promise I've kept to you. This is the evidence that shows that discrimination has occurred. One, the plaintiff has a documented disability. Two, the disability was easy to resolve. As the testimony shows, it would have taken the employer $2,000, $2,000, to resolve the difficulty that the plaintiff had. Three, documents and emails showed that the employer knew of the disability. Four, despite knowing of the disability, despite knowing of the disability, and despite telling all of the employees that if they had a disability, they would be protected, the employer decided to put Noel on a PIP. The reason why the PIP was very important is just as the HR specialist had said, it encapsulated all of the considerations that the employer had of the employee before termination. Not one part of the PIP mentioned her disability. Now the argument could be made, well that's because the disability wasn't a factor, but I would say differently. The employer specifically said that it had no knowledge. It had no knowledge. But the contradictions in the testimony show that it did. The emails show that they did. <coughs> the PIP, which is very strange, it didn't attempt to strike a balance. It didn't say, you know what, there are some difficulties, but you do have a disability, let's come and work together. What it did do is push the entire responsibility on Noelle. The entire responsibility onto the victim and tell her, if you don't perform, we're going to let you go. It destroyed her life. The testimony shows that after the termination, after the employer's refusal to spend the $2,000, it destroyed her. Now, I've said this in my cases before, and I say it again. You don't have to believe my client. You don't. And you don't have to believe the defendants. Because frankly, sometimes people say what benefits them. What I ask you to do is to go to the documentation. The documentation when it was created on Exhibits 7, Exhibits 9, Exhibit 57, they didn't think that they were going to be presented. They didn't think that when, the, when it was written that those statements would cry out to you today. But they do cry out to you today. They cry out to you and they tell you that the employer is at fault. There's another thing I want to say. We're not here. We're not saying the HR person is evil. I don't think that people actually sit there and say, we're going to plot. We're going to plot and take out an individual. I don't think people are like that. I think people go to work, they try their best, and they leave. But you have to remember something. We are not litigating against people. We are litigating against an entity. And if we don't find for the plaintiff, direct TV won't change. The HR specialist that was here, she went to another job. There'll be another person that comes and takes her place. What we need to tell direct TV, which is an entity, is that you must, you must change for all of your employees. So there may be some confusion because there may have been some misdirection in terms of feeling that somehow if we ask for money damages, that it's going to go against these people that got up on the stand. Now, 
In the opening statement, I said this. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you for $13 million. During the board of hire, I asked you, is that something you would be willing to accept? $1 million for each year that she worked. Some of you may say, her damages aren't that much. And her actual damages may not be. However, because we are not litigating against people, but against an, ent but against an entity, we must ask ourselves, what amount of money would an entity actually feel? I can tell you this, $13 million is not even 1%, not even half percent of Direct TV's income for the year of 2013. However, I would say this, $13 million, although it would indent Direct TV, certainly would make a statement. It would say that each time you hurt somebody, you will lose a million dollars for each year that you employ them. And that's the reason why I came up with the $13 million number. So that that $1 million per year number can be heard throughout DirecTV. That if somebody has a disability, that you must work with them to find that middle ground so that they can be able to do their job properly. For $2,000, for $2,000, we are asking for $13 million. Why? Because for $2,000, Direct TV could have made somebody's life not only better, but for the amount of work that she put in and the amount of energy and passion that she had, it's worth it. Justice is not cheap. And it is important that we realize that now. I'm going to close with this. Six months from now, you will be driving in your car. And I can be able to tell you that if you don't give $13 million, you will ask yourself, Geez, I, I spent two weeks of my life. Is Direct TV any different? But I can be able to tell you that if you give $13 million today or more, you can be more guaranteed that Direct TV has changed.